Okay, next little piece of field craft here, continuing with the guard duty theme, guard roster. This is a leader task. This is typically done by the sergeant of the guard, or it is done by the team leader, if it's an engineer squad or an infantry squad, or it is determined by the vehicle commander if you have something like a tank or artillery piece yet you're pulling guard duty on whatever it turns out to be information you need to know the number of posts and rovers that are used continuously during the rotation number of troops available for use over the rotation number of hours that have to be covered during the rotation now I have a real simple example here. This is basically uh, the type of thing I had as an engineer squad. Example, we're covering 10 hours of darkness. We're doing this during the winter time. The start of our guard shift will be at 20 hundred. It will end at 06 when stand two begins. I have eight troops available. I have 10 hours divided by eight troops means each troop has a one hour and 15 minute shift. Now the first guard rotation will start at 20 hundred hours. It will end at 21 15 hours. The final guard shift will start at 0445 and end at 0600 hours. Typically, unless it's at a fixed position that is maintained 24 seven, if you're doing this off a vehicle or something like that, stand to is the end of your guard rotation, usually. You usually have more guards on at night than you do during the daytime. Now you can also have a percentage of guard. This could be where you have to have 50% of your people on guard duty. You could have 10%, you could have 25%, you could have 33%, you could have 36%. This is typically a type of thing that you'll see when you're out on missions, you're in the field. You don't necessarily have a perimeter per se. You don't have obstacles up. You may not have fighting positions in. It's just everyone is hunkered down. You're closed in. You have people that are staying on guard to make sure the enemy doesn't you know, do something. And typically in those, instead of doing uh, like this, we'll do it as a uh, percentage. Like I said, it could be 10%, could be 50%, could be 75%, but you have to have some people that are getting sleep. You always have to take that into consideration. People must rest at night so that they can operate during the day. Or if you're doing your missions at night, you have to have that guard duty going during the daytime so people can sleep during the day and do their operations at night. Things to consider. Doing a guard duty roster is easy. It may not seem like it, but it is. Now, I tried always to make these shifts really easy. You know, one hour, maybe it's 45 minutes, an hour 15 minutes, an hour and a half. Uh, never go over two hours on a guard shift. Past two hours, people are getting too tired, they're gonna fall asleep. Even if you give them coffee or they're doing something to stay awake, past two hours during the middle of the night, they're gonna start falling asleep. So ideally under an hour and a half per shift. Now, if you end up with a weird number, you come out to like an hour and 12 minutes, hour and 10 minutes, you know, something strange, an hour and five minutes. You'll probably have one shift that will be longer than the others. If that's the case, you know, do that as either your first guard shift or your last guard shift, and then the others have a set even number all the way through. Now, you have basically what are called reward shifts or special guard shifts. These were typically your first and your last shift. These were the ones that were the most sought after. Why? Because each person that is on that, either the first shift or the last shift, they get the longest period of continuous sleep. If you have guard duty during the night, you're sleeping a few hours, you're up, you're doing your shift, and then you gotta get back to sleep 
before you have to get up and start your next day of work. When you're on one of those, one of those middle shifts, the best one is at the very middle of the night. You get a decent amount of sleep before, a decent amount of sleep after. The worst shift I always thought was that second to last. So in this case, the one that would start at uh, 0330 go till 445. Because that person has to try to get back to sleep and can only get about an hour's worth of sleep before they have to get up and start their day. More than likely, they're only going to get about a half hour of sleep because they're going to get woken up to have to pull stand to. That shift always sucked. Uh, I tried always to keep guard duty on a rotating basis so that it sucked equally for everyone. So if you had that uh, second to last shift one night, the next night you'd have the last shift. So then you got that little bit of reward. Uh, if you're on a vehicle crew or engineer squad, this was real common with us, our drivers and our TCs would either have the first shift or the last shift because they had to have the most sleep. So then all the dismounts, we did all those guard duty shifts in between. So if you're on like a tank or something like that, your gunner probably would also be given one of those uh, special shifts also, either the first or the last. So It's straightforward, it's easy to figure out, it's a little bit of math, but it's not that complicated. Um, when you wake up, I'll mention this, for your guard, you're make, waking up the next person on guard. You can have the person that's roving, tell that person that uh, at X number of minutes before the end of shift, they need to go wake people up. Or if you're on a base camp like this, I had mentioned a supernumerary, had the supernumerary that's for that guard shift, go and wake up people and you need to make sure they're awake. Don't just tap them and they say, yeah, I'm awake, I'm awake. No, you stay there until they get up, they move, they get out of their sleeping bag, get out from under their poncho liner and start getting their shit on. You make sure every single person gets up because there's always going to be that one person who says they're awake, they may sit up and you think, okay, you're good to go. You walk off, they then lay back down and go to sleep and say, screw it. That always happens. Make sure everyone gets up, gets moving, and is getting ready for the guard shift before you wake the next person. But you try getting everyone woken up as quickly as possible. How soon do you wake them up? Usually wake them up 15 to 20 minutes before their guard shift. And then you let them know what the current time is and that they're supposed to start their guard shift at X time. Let's say their, net, their guard shift starts at 2115, so 2100 hours. You're waking up the people for the next rotation. You tell them, hey, 2100, you got to be on guard at your guard post or at the, wherever you're supposed to meet for guard, at the talk, whatever it is. You have to be there by 2115 or 2110. So you make sure everyone's getting up. They're getting their stuff together. They know the time, they know what's going on, knows what's expected of them, and then they're moving. Pretty straightforward. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot Militia Movements, always remember SA Owns.